Let's get slicing and dicing with Sir Sturdy Horror fans. On this podcast, you will hear me and a guest do some movie reviews, random funny horror chats, and whatever else comes to mind. So tune in, kick back, relax, and always remember, I'll see you in your nightmares. Well, this Jason's mask. There we go. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Another exciting episode of Horror Research 30. Today I have my guest and author, Lee. Lee, how are you doing, man? Good. I'm great. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. It's a nice awesome. day off. Yeah. So it was pretty, pretty good. And I see you got a lot of quite a few books behind me. Yeah, they keep flashing up there, and uh, I'm a writer mostly. I'm also, um, I love all things horror, you know, mm-hmm. but, uh, I got into a horror, you know, first of all, as a, as a reader and then, um, way back in 1967, we, my family moved to a little Swiss community in Western Indiana called burn. And I started school there and I started to read and I guess I was in second grade and I don't, I don't know if you, um, know about or if they still have this but they had these scholastic scholastic book clubs and they and they would have this little newspaper that would come out i i don't know whether it was every week or was every month or something Mm -hmm. and it would list you know books for kids in it and i would just i would just that was my thing you know i would go over that little catalog and i would be you know counting my pennies and whatnot (laughs) so i could you know see what i could save up and um you know buy for a book and the first book that turned me on to horror was this one here. It's called How to Care for Your Monster by um, Norman Bridwell. And Norman, this was written in 1970, but um, most people know uh, Bridwell for his Clifford the Big Red Dog series. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. Um, this was about um, you could get a monster of your own. You know, you could have Frankenstein in your basement and then there was count dracula and the mummy and uh uh, the wolf man he had a werewolf so i that just like totally turned me on so i was you know eight nine years old and i was totally into that and those are basically um the monsters that were held over from the um 40s and 50s you know Mm -hmm. dracula and i had this recurring dream where dracula the wolf man and frankenstein were chasing me around our house and we had two sets of staircases in our house so my sister and i used to like chase each other you know around the house we'd go up one staircase you know all through the halls and then down the other staircase i had this dream where they were chasing me you know we we didn't have um the monsters that uh we have today you know jason and freddie and all that kind of stuff but that's how i got started you know reading horror and that really turned me on and there was a lot of humor in that um book too and uh so i'm still partial to you know humorous horror uh second grade i learned how to write and i wrote my first story on three ring notebook paper um with pencil And it was full of skeletons and witches and blood and just, you know, all this terrible stuff. And my teacher took it to the school, elementary school principal. (laughs) And he read it. And he was a member of the Lions Club there in Bern. Mm -hmm. And so was my father. And my father was a pastor of an evangelical church. So my... principal i don't know if he read this story but he mentioned it at the lions club meeting that he was i guess he he was the chair of it mm-hmm. and he fined my father a dime because the preacher's son had written such a horrible story <laughs> full of oh, skeletons wow. witches and blood <laughs> and that was the first time that money exchanged hands for my fiction but it didn't find its way into my pocket so <laughs> <laughs> That's that's pretty cool. <laughs> Excuse me. That's pretty cool though. Like starting out from 
second grade, like you were saying, and the way you started into horror was books, which it doesn't sound crazy at all, but it just sounds, I've never heard anybody start from books. Usually it's from a movie from, you know, from like an older cousin, friend or sibling that's watching a horror movie and they'd be like, Hey, you should check this out. Yeah. Even as young as like second grade and stuff, the ages between like five and seven, that's when I got into horror. Mm Mm-hmm. But it was with it was more so with movies. But I did like, uh, for example, like the Goosebumps books, which I believe those were in the Scholastic News. Um, yeah, there was the Goosebumps. That was like the main one I would read here and there as a kid. And there, there was a couple. I can't think of any. Uh, what was the other one? There was another one that's still pretty popular now. It's an older book, though. Oh man, there's three parts of it. There's like a skeleton on the very front on the book with a cigar in its mouth. I have it at the tip of my tongue. I just cannot think of what the heck it's called. Yeah. But anyway, it'll come to me at a random time. But anyway, um, yeah, movie movies is what really got me into it. But I did like to I did like to read as a kid in general. And then once I found out there was these horror, you know, creepy books like like I said, like Goosebumps. Mm-hmm. And the one that I cannot oh my goodness. It's gonna bother me. <laughs> <laughs> You'll think of it. Oh, scary stories. Yeah. The book of scary stories, which is such a simple title. How did I forget that? But it's what, what's crazy about it. And what's kind of funny about it is, like I said, I've been watching these movies since I was about five, and I'm thirty. So I've been watching these since I was about for thirty years now, and I didn't even I didn't even dawn on me till like the other day when I was having a similar conversation. I'm like, holy shit! I was like, I'm thirty five now. I've been watching horror for about thirty years. <laughs> yeah. And for the most part, I will admit, like a lot of the stuff I did watch over the years, up until maybe the past ten years or so more or less i've been watching pretty much the same stuff like the jasons the michaels the freddies the child's play mm-hmm. stephen king movies but it's just and it's just what i was but the way i my reasoning for that was it was what i was introduced to as a kid for so you you only you could i mean as a kid you can only watch so many things as you know right. and then as i got into my adulthood this is before social media and stuff i only knew about certain movies like that again say my video store had act the head you know, movies that I had access to, which was pretty much, I guess you can say a lot of the big name movies for the most part. Yeah. And that's one thing I do love about social media. And that's one thing I love about podcasting in general is it makes me look at, it makes me find more movies. It makes me check out more movies. Because again, if I, when I have guests on previously, the way I used to do my show is I let the guests pick a movie. Mm-hmm. But now what we do is um myself and my co, well, I made a wheel and for the for both shows actually so we each picked for for this show it was me my co-hosts and a bunch of other people picked five movies a piece five good ones or five movies a piece three good two bad mm-hmm. and for the other show it was just me and my co-hosts we each picked 10 movies pretty much the same like seven movies good three can be whatever you want but a non-horror spin that wheel and whatever it picks is what we're watching it takes the guessing and the thinking out of it out of everything which is great yeah and uh, again it also it makes me watch a lot more movies horror and non-horror just in general stuff that i may have seen before never seen in my life never even heard of yeah and i like it I, i love it man like it's it's cool to be able to sit down and talk to people like yourself an author and you're i mean we're both home and you're just doing it through the internet talking horror like it's crazy how much horror and how many people how many people i've met through horror mm-hmm. how many friendships i've made through horror and just like connections and all that all that good stuff i was all through horror since i started this show and it's just it's crazy yeah it's crazy i think horror people are, are the best you know they're mm-hmm. they're some of the nicest people you know most decent people cool people and um I've, you know, made a a lot of friends that way. Uh, You know, when I was, when I was little, we didn't have cable. Cable didn't even exist. So I didn't get to see a whole lot of movies when I was younger. (sighs) What are some of the ones that I remember? I remember I would run home from elementary school when I was in, I don't know, third grade or so. And at four o'clock, I, I lived in the state of Indiana. So what's, I think that's central time. Anyway, ran home four o'clock to make sure I watched Dark Shadows. I don't know if you ever heard of that show. It was in the late 60s. It was a black and white. It was a soap opera 
but it was set um, in this old house and they had vampire, you know, there was a vampire in it, Barnabas Collins. Uh, and there were, you know, ghosts and, and things like that. But I, you know, that just like really lit me up and mm -hmm. I'd run home to watch that. And then, and then there was another one, Kolchak, the Night Stalker. Not, not the new, not the new Netflix documentary series, but there was this old, it was kind of like, um, an X files, but it was like back in the early seventies. Yeah. And that was pretty wild too. And I don't think my parents knew that I watched it. But <laughs> Yep. Yep. That's how it goes. Like for me, it was, uh, I'm trying to think there was the goosebumps TV show. Yeah. There was, are you afraid of the dark? which was one of my favorite freaking shows as a kid. Um, the, I love watching like the monsters. And, yeah. Uh, what was the other one? Adam's family. Yes. Thank you. The Adam's family. And I, and I loved it like in black and white too. I thought that was just great for the show. Yeah. And I just watched, I'm, I'm mentioning this now because we just watched the movie last week called, uh, we did a review on the other show called the movie is called the true. The true. It's French. I'm probably saying it wrong, but it's yeah. L E. And then T R O U, but anyway, that movie's in black. It's a prison escape movie, and it's in black and white. Of course, there's subtitles, but like the way the the way that movie was set up, it, the movie was recorded. It was done in the '60s, but it's based on a true story from 1947. But the way it was like set up, like remember how the black and white shows how like when they go to a different scene, how it would just kind of. I can't explain it really, <laughs> but it was just just the way it went to the next scene is how the movie mm -hmm. kind of went to the next scene. Of course, because of the time. Yeah, and I just loved that about it. I was like, it, it, it remind that movie reminded me of like just sitting back watching shows. Like I know it wasn't horror, but just sitting back watching shows like The Monsters and yeah. Adam's Family and those type of shows that were in black and white. And I just enjoyed every single bit of it. And like, I don't know, it's it's just so cr again, like you were saying, uh, people are so nice in the horror community. Yeah, some of the nicest people I've ever met. Have you ever been to like a horror convention? Yes, I'm a member of the. Uh Horror Writers Association. Oh, nice. And I went to their um, convention last year. It was in uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Okay. And, uh, you know, met a lot of people and, um, you know, saw some friends that I knew, you know, had met on Facebook and whatnot. And then, yeah, you know, there were speakers there and they had, you know, reception and um, <clears throat> a lot of authors gave you know, talked about their books and, you know, the publishing industry. So it was, you know, it was a good time. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's but, good. um, I like to watch movies too. I'm, I'm trying to like, I go through cycles where I do a lot of reading mm. and not a lot of writing. And then I go through cycles, you know, where I'm, um, writing a lot and, and publishing and editing and whatnot. But right now I'm kind of on a movie kick. And uh, I've been trying to watch a movie every night. And where's my list here? Now, have you ever thought about writing a movie? <clears throat> um, I thought about it, but I haven't really studied script writing. So, you know, I, th I think my horror is pretty visual. So I, I might get around to doing that someday, but uh, just right now I haven't. Yeah. And, and um last night was it last night no sometime over the weekend i watched something that i saw i think they showed it to us in school it's called the omega man starring uh charlton heston mm -hmm. <clears throat> it was uh made in 1971 and it was based on richard matheson's novel i am legend so like if you remember i think it was will smith was in i am legend about 10 years ago yeah. Yep. Maybe 15. I, you know, but, um, this movie was based on, I am legend. It really sucked, <laughs> but, but, um, you know, the, the dialogue was terrible. The acting was terrible. The soundtrack was just goofy. Um, costuming was ridiculous, but you know, it's something that when I was eight or nine years old, it like really, really turned me on really mm. spark, spark my imagination so i had to watch it for nostalgia's sake so it's 50 years old now some movies re hold up really well this did not hold up well but i watched it for nostalgia's sake and uh um so that was one of my watches uh what else 
they showed that, that to us in school. They also showed us one time, I think it was in junior high, um, they started showing a psycho in the um, school auditorium. Really? And, and they got to the shower scene <laughs> and kids started to scream. So they turned the movie off and they wouldn't let us see the rest of it. <laughs> I, was, I was really, really ticked off. You, uh, you I, was, I wanted to see that so bad, you know, because it's like I hadn't seen it on TV. I didn't see it in the theater. It was 1960, mm -hmm. but, you know, it's still a movie that, like, really holds up. You know, like, I can watch it today. It's still very effective. Yeah. You know? Um, what else have I watched recently? Uh, Black Christmas, 1974. I watched that. Classic. Recently. Classic. That, that right there... Once you watch the movie, I'm kind of surprised it's not up. I'm surprised it's not more popular. Mm -hmm. And just just because you watch the film, it's, su it's such a it's a really good film. And I know it's I know for horror fans, we know about it, but it's even like across the board. It's not like up there with like. Uh, I'm trying to think, I know it's a single movie, but like with the Halloween Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, you know, those type of movies. And I feel like even if it's it's a really good movie, it's a really good movie. Yeah. But I think I don't know what's I don't to me. There's not much wrong with it. But I, I for me, I'll say for my holiday horror movies, I like them to be like I do like my you know the the, like the serious tone how that one was. But I like a lot of like goofy cheesy, mm -hmm. just because it's a holiday movie. And I think of and the reason why I say that is because I like I think of like a family function, which is just ridiculous on that before covid pre covid ridiculous yeah. on the holidays it's uh, there's always laughs you know what i mean there's always something funny and stuff going on and I'm, i like how horror would tie that in like the horror comedies yeah with the holiday horror comedies with the family set or whatever the case may be but make it kind of funny fun not that black christmas didn't have its funny parts we probably shouldn't have been laughing at all of them but that's what horror fans do yeah. but that's a really yeah that's a really good movie yeah i was i was um i was surprised at it you know it's you know, a lot of horror movies are, are kind of cheesy. Yeah. <laughs> and, but, you know, that usually doesn't bother me. I, you know, I just enjoy the g genre, but the acting was really, was really good. Mm -hmm. And, um, I thought it was really well done. Um, what else did I watch recently? Um, Train to Busan. 2016 i had been hearing about that one and i i wasn't gonna watch it it wasn't like at the top of my list because i didn't want to you know just read subtitles and but i don't know why because i always have the subtitles on now anyway <laughs> <laughs> i'm surprised at how much i miss you know if i don't have the subtitles on mm -hmm. but um it was it was amazing really really well done agreed you know, zombie movie and um Heartfelt, you know the the little girl in it. She was just she was an amazing act, little actress. I agree, and the, you know what I liked about that movie too was because same with me. I didn't feel like reading subtitles. I don't know why because I made a huge mistake, and my friends were telling me. My brother and my one friend were telling me that you need to watch this. You need to. They told me probably for a, a year or more that I need to watch yeah. it. So I finally watched it in 2019, like the end of 2019. And I was just like, why the hell did I wait so long to watch this movie? It was so good. And it was one of those films to where, one, I didn't mind the subtitles at all, which I need to watch more foreign films because they're amazing. Yeah. And two, you didn't really need to know the subtitle. You didn't really didn't need to read the subtitles to get the feeling of the movie. Right. Like, and I mean, I mean, like the emotion, emotional parts of the movie, not just the whole zombie chase, but like the emotional parts of the movie, because you got that just from the facial expressions from the actors and actresses in the movie, which I thought was great. <laughs> and from the mood of the movie, the tone and every, everything, I was just went, it was awesome. It was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, one of the things that, you know, I thought about, you know, as I watched it is, uh, I didn't understand what they were saying, but how people feel about each other and their family relationships we're the, we're the same, you know, where, yes. whatever nation we're from, whatever country we're from, whatever language we speak, 
you know, parents still care about their ch children. Children, you know, are still, you know, attached and love their parents. Mm -hmm. And, um, <clears throat> you know, like the, t the two little old ladies in it, you know, <laughs> they're just like little old ladies. They're, they're the same everywhere. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, very, very universal. Just a different, we just say it a different way, different languages. That's pretty much it. Yeah. So, um, what else did I watch this past weekend? Uh, I, I saw I found this, um, list of 200 movies, horror movies that you, you know, were supposed to be recommended that everybody watch if you liked horror. Mm -hmm. And so I started going through it and, you know, right now I'm on the A page. Uh, but there's this movie called Antichrist, uh, directed by Lars von Trier. 2009 starring Willem Dafoe, Willem Dafoe and Charlotte I think it's Gainsbourg mm -hmm. and it was really really well done very intense um ha have you seen it no I haven't seen it okay it's something that I'd recommend it's it's they bill it as a drama but it's definitely a horror story and um it's sexually ex explicit, but you know, the acting was tremendous and it was had some of the most horrifying and intense scenes that I've ever seen in a movie. I'm, I'm surprised that, uh, <clears throat> it didn't get like an NC 17 rating, but, um, very disturbing, <laughs> but you know, beautifully the cinematography was, it, it was just fantastic. It was kind of an, an art film. Um, so, you know, I've got, you know, cheese on this hand and then I've got, you know, fine wine on the other. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the beauty of horror though, is like, you can go in any direction with horror and there'll be fans for it. There'll be a lot of fans for it. And it's just, I'm sure just about every single subgenre of horror, every horror fan likes at least one movie from that subgenre. Mm -hmm. Even if they don't like a ton of movies, they might like at least one movie for them sub subgenre. And I don't yeah. think you can say about any other genre of movie. Like you can't have like a cheesy comedy movie. You might watch that once and then that's it. A cheesy horror movie, you might yeah. watch that 20 times. Yeah. I'll even say bad movies. And I like watching bad movies. Yeah. When when um when you watch like a for example, if I a bad horror movie, you tell a horror fan, like, hey, I just seen this movie, it's probably one of the worst horror movies I've ever seen. <laughs> Every single time, first thought is, I should check that out. <laughs> yeah. Now you say that about any other genre, like great. Here's a perfect example: um, Batman and Robin, uh -huh. or Batman Forever. Terrible movies. Yeah, and those are the type of movies. Like if I yeah, just you know, I watched a, a superhero movie, Marvel or DC. How was it? Awful, horrible. Yeah, people are just like. Yeah. I don't even want to waste my time watching it. Like, I don't even want to waste my time watching it. But horror is a whole other... I think what it is, is because, like, with, with those movies, like, a, a, especially nowadays, the way Marvel's been doing things, you're mm -hmm. expecting those type of movies to be really good. Like, just really yeah. eye-catching and just awesome. Horror, it's more so, like, oh, it can't be that bad. There has yeah. to be at least a cool kill in it, depending on, you know, depending on the type of movie. It's like a slasher. There has to be at least a cool kill in it. It can't be that bad. And then you watch it and you're just like, all right, maybe it is, or maybe it's not. Yeah. And I'll go, I'm quicker to, <laughs> excuse me, I'm quicker for the most part to watch a bad horror movie than I am for the ones that get the social media hype of the scariest movie that people have ever seen or the best movie they've ever seen. Yeah. And this happens every year. We know that. Yeah. And when I finally do watch, I think that's what happened with Train to the Booth Side is it was so hyped up. I'm just like, it can't be that great. So I'll just wait on it. I was wrong with that one, but then there's been, I can't think of examples, but there's been plenty of times to where more times than not, I'll say to where these movies are so hyped up and you go to watch it and your expectations are up here mm -hmm. out of the camera site and you watch the movie and it's like maybe right here. Yeah. But it's like, and I'm trying my best, which I've been getting better at to go into movies with zero expectations, even when they have that hype, but in the back of your mind, you're like, okay, people said this movie was amazing. I, it, it better be at least decent. <laughs> yeah. It's, well, I, I think a lot of those movies that, you know, get the big exposure and a lot of viewership, um, 
they they're not just horror they they have some other kind of element in it that um attracts or satisfies you know the viewers like train to be Son was it was wasn't only a horror movie you know a zombie movie yeah. um zombies are have become very popular but it was a good action movie yeah oh yeah lot lots of action and uh <clears throat> what else um oh man i think the other thing too is how going back to what i was just saying is how I'm, <laughs> you'll see it on facebook you'll see it especially when they're advertising the movie scariest mm -hmm. movie since such and such yeah you go to watch it and it's like this this should be a freaking kids horror movie <laughs> the, the stuff <laughs> i've seen this is not scary you yeah. know what I mean? they'll, they'll have like the person they'll have a person that hypes up the movie they'll have the person like you know they'll have the, the theater scene where people are screaming in theaters and you go and watch it and it's like my i mean i wouldn't let her watch this but i'm just gonna use it as an example. like my six-year-old niece would watch this fine mm -hmm. but again <laughs> i i you know what it is too i feel like people my age and older and maybe i'll say maybe 30 28 to 30 and up mm -hmm. from the horror that we all grew up on and seen in the you know in the 90s and 80s yeah when we were kids I feel like that's why a lot of this stuff doesn't really affect us as much. I mean, there, there, there's a lot that they do really good with, like the Conjuring franchise, the Insidious yeah. franchise, and stuff like that. But I mean, more so the ones that are like thrown on Netflix. I'm like, okay, this, it's a good story, but it's not as scary as everybody's making it out to be. Like, it's right. just, it doesn't do that. And I know I don't, I don't get scared of movies like I used to as a child, of course. Yeah. But there's still like not that. I feel like a lot of those movies nowadays that come out wouldn't bother me as a kid. Yeah, what I've seen as a kid. Yeah. Um, what, what did I see when I was younger? Um, like I said, they, they didn't have a whole lot of stuff that, you know, was telephone televised. Um, mm -hmm. we had three channels, you know, and one of them didn't come in very well. <laughs> so, you know, they had like the Saturday creature feature. So you got to see a lot of, you know, old stuff like sci-fi movies and, you know, some horror movies and um, Vincent Price, House of Wax. You know, I, uh, I like those kind of things. Um, but it was in 1978, I was 16. And that's when Halloween, the first Halloween movie came out. And it was, it was really different from everything that had come before. Yeah. Oh, you know, it's right. just, it has a very special place in my cold, dark heart. <laughs> was that something you got to actually see in theaters? Yes. That I was I, 16. I was old enough to drive. So um, I was able to go to theater. So I saw, you know, Halloween. I, 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 saw it several times but uh and in the theater it was it was really scary because nobody was used to um that relentless you know action of the now it's you know it's yeah. been re redone and everything but so it's not um it's not that novel but it was it was really really thrilling to see that and uh so <clears throat> Um, where'd I leave off? Second grade, I started to read. So I was, you know, reading things and I started to write stories. Um, I used to, you know, write them on three ring notebook paper and then I would bind them in like, you know, black, uh, construction paper and I would, you know, draw on them with, you know, draw a skull on it or, you know, blood, you know, flowing all over the page mm -hmm. and put it, put it together with a little brass tacks. But I wrote a story um, called Eyeballs Only about a mad scientist that um, um, drank some potion that he made and then he turned into this monster that went out and attacked people and tore their eyes out and ate them. <laughs> oh, wow. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. So I did that when I was younger and um then we moved again. What was this? 1971 we moved to a little rural 
village called Hazen, and there was nothing to do there. So I, I did a lot of reading and um, <clears throat> books that like really made me. Uh, again, um, these are ones that I got from like the school book club, or I got somehow in school, whether they were in the library or not. This um, Great Tales of Terror and the Supernatural had like for the last 100, 150 years, it's got some Poe in it. It's got uh, I love it, Carolyn Poe. All, all that kind of um, <clears throat> stuff in it. So, you know, I read that probably when I was 12. Um, first book that like really, really turned me on and made me want to be a horror writer was The Other. Nice. By Thomas Tryon. And... Um, it was his first novel. He was an he was an actor, uh, gay man I, that I found out later. But it's like uh, this book, like totally. I don't know when when you're a young teenager, you don't have a whole lot of I you know I was kind of sheltered. Yeah. But <clears throat> so. I've read it since a number of times. It's it's one of my very favorite books. And it just like really electrified me and made me want to be a horror writer. And another one, this isn't the original copy, but James Herbert's um, The Rats. The Rats. I read that, I think it was in eighth grade. And it was just really gory about, you know, rats attacking people. And uh, Oh, wow. So those are the two things, two books that, you know, really made me want to be a horror writer. So I started writing and um, my first publication was in, I think it was 1979. They, um, <clears throat> I wrote a story called Trick or Treat for this, I think either the school newspaper or the literary magazine. Mm -hmm. And the local newspaper, the Jeffersonian Democrat, they... Um, printed our papers for us and they got a hold of the story and they put it in the uh, town newspaper. So oh. that was the first time I got published. That's awesome. Yeah. didn't get paid for it, but <clears throat> that was okay. That's, that's still cool though. I mean, yeah. <clears throat> and you found this, I mean, what, what's cool too, is you found out at a young age, what you wanted to do. Like you said, you wanted to be an author and you did it. Yeah. It real. That's really cool. Cause a lot of people, I mean, especially as a kid, there's a million different things that go through your head that you want to do. You want to be this and that and this and that. And then you're an adult. <laughs> the next thing you know, you're an adult <laughs> and you're not those things you want to be. <laughs> yes. But no, well, that's awesome. I've been alive a long time and time goes very quickly. And the older that you get, the faster it goes. Yes. So I've been at this for about 50 years now. And, um, uh, that's, you know, writers all I've ever wanted to be. So I, I was good at English in high school, graduated high school in 1980. And then I started college at uh, Indiana university of Pennsylvania. And I majored in um, English and I took all the writing courses that I could. I really wasn't interested in um, <clears throat> literature. Uh, I did take some literature courses, but took a lot of writing courses. Yeah. And, uh, it was then that I discovered that I wouldn't be able to make a living, you know, writing short stories and poetry. <laughs> so, um, computers were coming out there then. And so I got into, I don't know, about two years after I graduated from college in, in 84, I started working for a software company. So I became a technical writer and that's, what I've used, you know, my education, you know, to make a living from technical writing, but it's very, um, left brain, you know, dry, technical, uh, boring, really boring. So, but I've continued to write fiction, you know, that helps me employ my left brain to be creative. So, mm -hmm. um, so I get benefits, I get a paycheck and, you know, fiction writing is, not something I'm ever going to get rich on, you know, unless I publish something, you know, with popularity of Stephen King, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anything, I mean, anything's possible though, especially now with social media, but yeah, I do get what you mean. <clears throat> I do get what you mean with that. 
Now, um, I was gonna. Oh, I just had something. I actually bought movies already. What's your favorite book that you've written, or do you have one? Hmm. Uh, what happened? I um, two thousand four to two thousand six. I, I, I lived in the Pittsburgh area for about twenty five years, and there's a little. Uh, Catholic school in Greensburg. It used to be an all um, girls college, but they <clears throat> became co-ed and they started this program ma um, master's program in writing popular fiction. So it's like you know, most universities, they will their writing programs have to do with fine literature. You yeah. know, and I've never been a fan of fine literature. You know, I've read The Great Gatsby. I like it. I've read The Old Man in the Sea of Mice and Men. You know, and I like those books, but that's not the kind of writing that I was ever interested in. So this program, graduate program, concentrated on um, genre fiction. You know, romance, mystery, horror, crime, um, science fiction, whatnot. So I... <clears throat> had an idea about this um, young man who runs the local crematory at um, the funeral home. And he ha he discovers that he has this gift uh, that he can discern the cause of death of the people that he cremates. Mm. And he doesn't think it's any big deal because they're already dead, you know, but then when he, what he discerns differs from what's on the death certificate, then he, um, there it is up there right now called death perception. Mm -hmm. um, when what he discerns mm -hmm. differs from what's on the death certificate, he finds himself in the midst of murderers. So it's like the people that he cremates um, talk to him and he knows how they died by roasting marshmallows over their ashes, which was <laughs> a very odd idea. <laughs> but um, that's probably, that was my thesis at Seton Hill. And uh, it's probably my most popular uh, book to date. Interesting. Now, are, are all these books, um, can they be found on Amazon or? Yes, they're on Amazon. They're on my um, webpage at leeallenhoward.com. And uh, there's, I've got a few short stories there that are only available for Kindle, but uh, uh, all the novels that I've written, um, the Adamson family, that's a, uh, young adult Gothic. Uh, the sixth seed is kind of dark science fiction or paranormal. Um, and then the bedwetter, which is my latest, that's my fifth novel. And that was, I really, uh, I guess I would have to say, I really scared myself writing that. I did a lot of research about um, serial killers and, you know, what made them serial killers. And uh, I read um, clinical books about them that studied, you know, real life cases that I felt like I had to take a shower after I read them. You know, that just, I mean, you know, and <laughs> I've watched a lot of stuff. I've read a lot of stuff. And for me to say that it was pretty awful. There, there are some, really awful people out there in real life. Oh yeah. But, uh, but you know, I had to read about them. So, you know, the three things, starting fires, cruelty to animals, um, bedwetting. And this 26 year old guy, he, you know, had a problem with bedwetting and he, it starts up again and he just has this fantasy. Um, that he wants to find some woman and to shave her head. And it just, you know, leads forward and it's, it's pretty dark. I was in his head for, I think it was the fastest thing I ever wrote. I wrote it in about three to four months, but, um, totally in, um, coffee shops in the Pittsburgh area. But, uh, my, Influences for that, 
Jim Thompson's The Killer Inside Me. Mm. That was made into a movie with uh, Casey Affleck. <clears throat> Very hardcore. Cormac McCarthy's Child of God. Have you ever seen that movie? I have not. Um, it's another good one. Uh, by who directed it? James Franco directed it. Joyce Carol Oates, who's written a million things. She wrote this book, Zombie. Awesome book. I've read it like three or four times. And J.N. Williamson, The Book of Webster's. Those are my influences for The Bedwetter. And um, I'm still trying to get it reviewed, still trying to get, uh, you know, word out there about it. So but. It's, it's funny you say that actually, because um, <clears throat> I know how I said I, I, I don't really review books, especially like as of right now. Mm -hmm. But my I was telling my wife this, so I was telling her about the email and stuff. And she was like, well, I would read it and let you know how I felt about it. At least I was like, all right, well, we'll have to get the book. <laughs> but it's just like I, I just don't as I'm not saying I never would review books, but like right, as of right now, I don't, especially with the just the busyness, <laughs> the busyness. Sure. Yeah. But I do, I do want to get back. I, which I had an author on about a couple of weeks ago, and I did purchase her book. It has a bunch of short stories in it, which I have to start. But I do want to get back into just read, like if I'm laying down, just read. Even if I just start reading for like a half hour or a night or something, just to kind yeah. of exercise the brain a little bit. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I have to when when I have to have you send me your links. Now, that's what I want to ask you, too. Is it better to get your books off of Amazon or is it better to get it off of your website? Like, what, what's better for you as far as a percentage wise? What's better for you? Well, um, on my website, you can read, you know, about the book there. And you, uh, each page has links to wherever it's sold. Most of them are on all, all of them are on Amazon, but um, some of them are on Barnes and Noble. Uh, so it doesn't, you know, I don't fulfill orders directly. So I'm, I'm only getting a percentage of, you know, wherever readers are buying them from. So okay. it doesn't, I guess it doesn't really matter to me, you know, where you buy them from. It's, it's what some people don't like Amazon, so they don't want to, you know, spend their money there. But, um, that's where most of them are, especially, you know, the short stories and the Kindle only titles. Okay. Uh, so, but you know, you go to my website, leeallenhoward.com and you know, the main page there has covers of all my books, the ones that are, you know, showing up there and a few, and a few others. So, you know, you can read there and whatever interests you, you know, I'm always looking for new readers. Oh, definitely. Definitely. And I'll get the word out there to other people that I know. I'm trying to think. I know, I know, I know people that I know other readers and mm -hmm. other horror fans just to get the word out. But I think that's cool, though. I think it's really cool that you do. I think it's cool how you started something out of a child and you still, from what I've had from this conversation, it sounds like you still have that same passion yeah. to create stories. And now, when you do these stories, do you have to be, like, for example, for the bedwetter or for any of them, do you have to be like in a dark place? place mentally like do you have to put yourself in a dark place mentally to write these stories or how does that like how does the creativity kind of come out for you i know for because i've asked this for some people that are like they don't necessarily have to be in a certain mindset it just some for some people i guess it just happens like mm -hmm. someone was saying they're in a grocery store for this goes for like you know writing movies or books they're like in a grocery store they think of ideas they'll flip their grocery list over and just write a couple ideas down that they have you know just so they don't forget them or put them down on their phone right. so they don't forget them yep some people said that they've been in a sleep, like dreaming and literally wake up out of sleep and just write something down and then go back to bed. So how, yeah. does, how are you with that as far as creating? I always keep track of my ideas. I, you know, I have a, a file on, you know, in my fiction folder on my hard drive. Mm -hmm. And I always, you know, put the ideas down and, Every few months or at least once a year, I try and go through and I read, you know, reread all of them to see if anything sparks my attention. Because sometimes I'll get an idea and it could be, it could be years before it comes together with some other idea that really, you know, gets me going about it. Like um, <clears throat> for the bedwetter, 
that came up pretty quick. Like I, I went to high school, junior high and high school with a kid that um, he had pretty long hair and he came into school one day and his head was shaved. And I said, man, you, you really got a haircut, didn't you? And he, and he got really upset and I didn't know why. And I guess talking to some other girl about it, she said that he wet the bed and every time he wet the bed, his mother would shave his head. Oh, so, and for some reason, <clears throat> I remembered that about him. We were never close friends or anything, but I just got to thinking about that. And that idea would not leave me like how damaging and how hurtful and embarrassing that must have been for him. Mm -hmm. And so that's what sparked the idea for um, the bedwetter. And wow. <laughs> um, what else? Uh, death perception. Um, you know, I got the idea about somebody toasting marshmallows over, you know, the remains of somebody in a, in a crematory oven. And uh, so that put that together. And the sixth seed um, is about this guy who's got five kids and, you know, he's maxed out financially. And so he goes to have a vasectomy, but this um, doctor implants this alien seed in his vas deferens that impregnates his wife with the first human alien hybrid. Mm. So that's why it's called the sixth seed because it's a sixth child. So I, I don't know where my ideas come from, but <laughs> some of them, you know, they just pester me until I have to write about them. So that's cool though. Yeah. And from, I mean, from the ideas that you've told me just from some of the books and what you described from the few of your books, I think they would make fun films, fun indie films. Do you know if it was like a short film or, you know, yeah. a fun indie short? And I really think it's something you should look into. I know you said you will later on down the road, but I really think you should really yeah, look into it. And then just, hey, it's based off the book and people can go read that book and see the movie. Yeah. But it's, it, I think that's cool how, again, going back to it again, how you knew what you wanted to do as a kid and you're still doing it and you still have the same passion, maybe even a stronger passion now. Because you're more, you're more educated about this, about it all. Yeah. And that's all that it's just, it's just so cool. And I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to purchase a book or two and check these out. Awesome. Purchase a book or two and check these out. Cause it sounds, they sound interesting and you never, as far as that goes, like, are you saying as far as like, well, getting rich off a book, you never know what book can be the one that does it for you. Right. Out of the, I mean, with anything, I guess you could say the same thing about movies, but that, that one book, it could be that one book where you're just like, get a bunch of people reading it and then just like, holy, this is a really cool book. <laughs> that we should, let's check this out. I, I want to see a movie out of this and it can go from there. Yeah. So, you know, I like to edit too. You know, I've learned, um, one thing I learned when I was at Seton Hill, I, I learned how to not only write fiction, but, you know, um, edit it. So I started a publishing company called Dark Cloud Press, and that's there. At, it's at uh, darkcloudpress.com, and I've come out with two anthologies of uh, short stories. The first one's right up there right now. It's called Thou Shalt Not, mm -hmm. and it was um, <clears throat> horror and dark crime stories that are based on the Ten Commandments. Like so somebody oh. in the story breaks one of the Ten Commandments, with dire, deadly, or disastrous results, you know. So we've got, you know, murder in there, you know, that yeah, thou shalt not kill. Uh, they've, yeah, there's adultery in there, and, you know, they all the Ten Commandments. So that was kind of, they weren't really religiously themed, but that was, you know, kind of the um, kickstart that I, I yeah. used to get stories for that. So that came out on my... I just finished um, school that came out in 2006. And then a couple years ago, I did another antho called uh, Tales of Blood and Squalor. So I wanted like, you know, like gritty, dirty, slimy, 
<laughs> yeah. horror and and crime you know have um do you remember did you ever see the uh episode of the x-files called home um it's about I'm, this my now see my my wife is a huge x-files fan like she'll yeah. go through that series i don't know how many times she's been through that series i i'm not gonna say i'm a fan of it i don't hate it hate it i don't yeah. hate it and i don't i'm not gonna say i dislike it i just if she has it on like if she has it on and i'm doing something like usually i'm editing my episodes or something when she's watching it so i'll be in the other room kind of glancing up at the episodes here and there mm -hmm. i might have seen brief parts of it so i honestly couldn't tell you if she can find this in for you you'll want to watch it it's about this um family of inbreds that live in this house and um they breed with her mother and they hide her under the bed and it's just it's really it's gritty <laughs> it's mm -hmm. nasty um it's an infamous episode you know it's like uh i didn't like all the episodes that they did you know about other subjects but this one was just stood out was in the pantheon of lee ha allen howard's favorite you know tv and movies um so that was what i was going for there so okay blood squalor you know dirty poverty that's what yeah. i was going for and i'm trying to think of I'm open to do, to do another anthology of short stories. I'm looking for a topic. Yeah. Um, I don't know what it's going to be yet, but I like, you know, the process of putting the idea out there and then having people send me their stuff, you know, and I re really would like to um, get new writers published and this would be a way to do it. Oh yeah, yeah. Awesome. That's that's awesome. I actually <clears throat> I know somebody who's she's a she is a podcaster. She work I mean, I know she does her nine to five, but she's a podcaster, she's a writer, and she acts. I have to see if she might be interested. I'll get you once we're done recording, I will tr I'll tell you more about her and stuff like that. Cool. I'm trying to think and actually the last author that I had on here. Maybe I can give you at least let you guys exchange emails or something. I like I I can have you guys exchange emails or you know, vice versa and all that. Make sure it's cool with both of you and mm -hmm. kind of go from there. Maybe see what you guys can do together. Awesome. But that would be cool. That's that is one thing I also like to try to do with this platform of podcasting is if I can connect people that have a common interest with the horror stuff, whether it be movies or other podcasts doing interviews or now books. <laughs> yeah. I like to try to connect because you ne you never know what that connection can bring and where it can bring those people. Because I'm the, I'm the type of person I want to see everybody succeed. Yeah, as long as it's not hurting anybody or harming anybody. Yep. Or animals or muscle cars, I want to see you succeed. Yeah. Other than that, <laughs> you know what I mean. It's just I don't know. I'm just one of those people. I don't I don't like to just keep everything all close. Like oh no, I'm not going to tell you where you can go interview so that may help you or who you should connect with. I'm like, if I know the kid, if I can be that bridge, so to speak, I'll be that bridge. It's, I'm not, I will say this. I'm like, listen, people, if you guys have a fallen out, do not drag me into it. I just, <laughs> I just pretty much introduced you. Introduce yeah. you now get along. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, um, over the past few years and especially like the past couple months, I've, been trying to find um, underpublished authors, you know, like on Twitter, mm -hmm. um, that don't have a lot of followers, or they're just starting out in, you know, horror writing and whatnot. And I interview them. So I've got a number of interviews with horror authors on my uh, leeallenhoward.com website. Awesome. You know, so like I'll send them, you know, a set of questions, about a dozen questions you know, about their writing, you know, their projects, um, how they got into writing, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, then I publish it on my website and try to, you know, boost people, you know, try to put oh, them forward, lift them up, you know, get them ahead. A, a um, so, and, you know, usually they're very thrilled to have the opportunity 
you know, to talk about their, about themselves, about their writing, you know, about horror. Um, I'm trying to get somebody that does um, <clears throat> comics, you know, like graphic novels and comics, horror comics. I uh, haven't had anybody on my website, you know, talk about that yet. So, you know, I that comics, I might know a person or two, but it's not, the thing is, it's not horror. Both of them are non horror yeah. for comics. And then, um, but the other two authors they they both do horror, mm-hmm. horror related topics. Yeah. So I could try to get you, I could, well, what I'll do is I'll email them first. Mm-hmm. And if they're cool with it, I'll give you their emails and kind of yeah. like, I'll do like a group message type of email and kind of, you know, with you, with each of them and, Mm -hmm. and do the introduction. And then after that, you guys, you should be good. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But uh, no, I think that's real cool though. Like, and that's, again, like I said, that's what I like to do with this besides reviewing movies is having independent artists on here of all different, you know, all different types in the horror realm and just kind of get their voices out even if a lot of them have a bigger voice than i do but still there's probably a lot of people that watch my show or listen to my show that don't know about them mm-hmm. and it gets them more you know more viewers or listeners or readers possibly and i think i think that's a really cool thing you do because it's helping others and that's awesome that's real awesome and you, you never again you never know you never know that connection you're going to make how you're saying you want to do like an anthology series maybe with other writers or an anthology book with other writers which i think would be awesome yeah and you never again you never know where that's gonna go i would like i would actually like to see something like that like an anthology book maybe even an anthology book that turns into a movie with you know a few different writers where they have each of them has their own little story in there their own mm-hmm. creative story and then may i'm not saying they have to but maybe somehow they all connect one way or another and then you get down into a film sure. I think people would love that yeah a lot but that's awesome man that's that's I'm actually going to try to email them tonight so I don't forget. <laughs> cool. I'm looking for I'm looking for some women. Like February is Women in Horror Month. You know, so they're both. Uh, I got to find some ladies that want to talk about horror. <laughs> yeah, you're right. They're and they're both they are both women, so that'll help too. Cool. And they're both like I said, they're both big in the horror. And yeah, I'll get I'll, get, I'll more than likely I'm sure they'll be cool with it, but I don't want to. Say one hundred percent, they're cool with it, and then they're just like, yeah. "Aaron, hell no, <laughs> <laughs> work with anybody." Why'd you give out my email type of deal? Like, the one. Well, I know the one, the one I've known for a while because she's been on my show quite a bit. But uh, the other one, I had her on my show once. That was the author I had on a couple weeks ago. But I'm, again, I I feel like they'd be cool with something like that because it's a it's an opportunity for everybody to kind of grow. Yeah, sure. But um. I guess we can about wrap it up, though, man. All right. If you have any, I'd definitely love to have you on again. Maybe next time we we figure something out and do like a movie review or something. I think that'd be pretty fun. That would be great. And um, if there's anywhere, any anything you want to plug right now, your social medias, your website, anything you want to plug, you can say it right here. And then when you get a chance to shoot me an email, and when this episode comes out, I'll have it like down below in the YouTube for right. YouTube and all that other stuff. Sure. Uh, my contact information is on the contact page on my website, leeallenhoward.com. And uh, so you can get a hold of me there. You can follow me on Twitter, follow me on Facebook. Um, I'm not on Instagram much, but, uh, and, uh, you know, you can find, contact me by email there too. So I'd love to hear from anybody, you know, that's watching this or, you know, whatever. Just uh, like to talk horror. And I appreciate you having me on. It's been oh, a fun. Great. It's been a fun time. Same here. And any time, we'll we'll definitely be doing this again in the future, in the near future. Hey, maybe if all get you three connected, maybe I can have you three on here for a quick little fun interview about your books and stuff. Awesome. And other, other horror things. I'll try to get that in motion as well. But um, enjoy the rest of your night, man. Thank you for coming on. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. So thank you, thank you for reaching out and. You know, set, but us being able to set this up, this was a good time. Yep. To all the listeners out there and people who are going to be watching this in the future, go check him out. Awesome. So links and stuff will all be posted down there below. Go check out to go check out his work. Buy a book or two. And uh, yeah, with that being said, as always, I'll see you in your nightmares. <laughs>
Awesome. It's, it's, 